Well then, it's patch 9.1 and perhaps you want to play it. Perhaps you checked out Shadowlands early, or maybe you've just got that neglected alt that you would like to make some amends with. Well, of course, a new World of Warcraft patch does mean new ways to brush off the dust and get your character back to speed, and we are here to help you doing that. So whether you're catching up on your main or blasting to try something new at an alt, this video should sort you out. We're going to encompass what you need to do, uh, what you don't need to do, and how you can get ready ASAP. First up, your renown. The most pressing, and the most at odds with actually getting into Endgame, is renown and the various different Covenant campaigns. This might be varying levels of true, depending on what you actually want to do in the game, but it kind of feels that way regardless. Now, in order to start the new Chains of Domination questline, players will need to complete Chapter 2 of the 9.0 Covenant campaign, which introduces the character of Venari. Uh, it also introduces Torghast and the Twisting Corridors. However, two new skips are being introduced in Patch 9.1. The first skip will let you skip over the entirety of Chapter 2 of the Covenant campaign, so long as you have completed it on another character at least once before. That will actually get you straight to Chapter 1 of the new content. The second skip is for the Corthia intro. If you do it in one character, thankfully, you can skip it on others. So that's nice to see. This will put you right at the end of Chapter 3 of the new campaign. At this point, you'll need to get your Renown level up to 44 and complete your Covenant campaign in order to continue. Even if you've already completed that same campaign on another character. There's no skip for that just yet. Thankfully, time gating works in your favor here. <laughs> if you start an alt when 9.1 launches, you've got a full week to catch up. Renown level 44 won't actually be available until week 2 anyway. We'll have a step-by-step -step for these skips on the screen for you now just for a bit of convenience, because it's kind of easy to get lost in this soup. So feel free to, uh, well, pause me right now to shut me up and use the timestamps to return. If you need to farm Renown to get caught up, there is a very long list of activities that you can do. In an interview, Rapid Renown catch-up was promised, and that is actually something that is going to be there. Basically, all things that can give you Renown are just accelerated a bit. You'll get Renown more. And that means there's nothing special to do, just do as much stuff as you can. Now, the most effective ways to get Renown are as follows. Your Covenant Weeklies, Daily Covenant Callings, the Weekly Corthia and Maw Events, the Twice Per Week Maw Assaults, and then your Weekly Raid Bosses. Your Covenant campaign, of course, also provides you with renown, and you'll need to do that campaign anyway, so focus on doing that. You can also get renown from Dungeon and Bosses, the Ouroboros Dungeon Quests, Battlegrounds, and honestly, everything that's considered an activity. There are a few sources of super-fast catch-up gear coming in patch 9.1. The quickest will, of course, be crafted gear, which will be coming at item level 200, but it won't be available in week 1. Once it is available, though, head up the auction house and uh, the prices should go, go down over time, and it will be widely available for every slot. If you've got the bank, this will be the quickest way to get past all the intro-level stuff. Also note, crafters can actually make a 230 piece of gear, but you can only wear one of those crafted 230s. Also, the new world boss can drop 233 gear, which is way ahead of anything you can get initially, and it's a world boss, basically free. The next source, then, will be Corthia gear. There's effectively a whole gear progression set for Corthia. It's much like the Benthic gear from Najatar, starting at item level 200 and being upgradable over time. Now, the fastest way to get this gear is to purchase the Bind on Account tokens for 1,000 Stygia each from the vendor in Corthia. Now, you can get extra tokens um, and extra gear, in fact, by just doing the Corthia content. Specifically, that's the weekly and daily quests in Corthia and the Maw. 
Um, but there's also a drop chance from the rares, treasures, and events in Corthy as well. So basically go wild. Your limiting factor here is how much you can play that Corthia content. And don't worry, they basically dump a stack of this on your lap, so it shouldn't take very long. Now then, the upgrades to said gear. While farming this gear out, you'll be getting a whole bunch of relic fragments. These can be turned in for catalogued research. That is a currency that you can upgrade Corthia gear with, all the way from eye level 200 to 233. However, initially, it will be capped at item level 220, with both your character's Covenant Renown and your character's Corthia Research rank effectively time-gating the eye level 226 and 233 upgrades for a few weeks. If you're coming to the patch with a very low item level character, getting this gear will probably be your fastest way to increase your eye level. That is, of course, unless you've got some friends that are maybe willing to help you um, skip this step by doing things like, say, Mythic Zeros, which will drop to 10 gear this time around and should be a total face roll. Now, there's a caveat with those Mythic Zeros. Yes, they do drop by level 210 gear, but that will only happen once Season 2 starts. And Season 2 starts one week after Patch 9.1 comes out. We originally had a piece in this guy that was about, you know, the week one of this patch having the dungeon bonus event being active and that being hype, but the dungeon gear, of course, doesn't go up in eye level until week two. So for week one, just do Corvia. That's basically it. After that, though, get a group of a few friends together, um, you know, promise them a few beers and uh, get them to help you get kitted out in some dungeons. That will be a very fast way. So when you are sitting comfy at item level 200 plus, you are sort of caught up as far as the gear is concerned, and you can just go and pretty much play the game as intended. Mm, almost anyway. You'll still have legendaries and conduits to deal with, so we'll cover those. Well, I hope you've got some gold banked up, and I hope you love a bit of Torghast. If you're on an alt, you might get lucky here, because in Corthia, you can trade 300 soul ash for a bind and account box of 250 soul ash. Yeah, you'll lose 50 soul ash each time, but you can send that unused ash over to your alts. Now, as for earning fresh soul ash, Torghast offers significantly more now. Around 50% more, actually. So if you're catching up uh, a main, a full rank 4 legendary should only take 3 weeks of completing layer 8s, and a rank 1 will only take a single week of layer 5s. Between the new layers and the increased Soul Ash, Legendaries are pretty fast to earn here, especially if you've got a main doing some of the new layers, or maybe some friends to give you some carries. It does just boil down to doing more Torghast runs, though. Now, of course, you will need to be doing Torghast anyway in your main. You'll need to do the new layers for Soul Cinders, which is the currency used for the higher rank Legos. It's a lot of Torghast, but hey, at least the Torghast run is only five floors long now, and the score improvements and the missing tower grew do make Torghast a much more pleasant experience to go through. Also, the new legendary ranks, they don't need more Soul Ash. They only use those cinders. So a fully caught up character will be swimming in spare Soul Ash after a few weeks, which will be great for your alts. Just remember though, your legendary slot could conflict with a domination socket. If that happens, you might feel like you'd want to replace it, so be sure to, uh, well, check this list and know what to avoid crafting or where to recraft. Unlucky. The last major thing, then, that you'll need to get caught up is probably the most complicated. So brace yourself. It's conduit time. And look, there's no easy way to get caught up on any conduits that you don't have in patch 9.1, so if you are on a fresh character, You'll have to do a lot of content to get them all to drop. It's not that bad, though. Your weekly Corthia and Ma quests, they can drop multiple conduits at item level 200. Your best bet is to look up where your specific conduits drop and then target them, be that, of course, from dungeons, raids, world quests, or your Covenant Calling boxes. Once you've got the ones that you want, you can then focus on upgrading their item level. Now on that, 
if they drop fresh for you in patch 9.1, that'll be great because they'll be starting off at a higher item level. So do that first before you start to think about upgrading your conduits. Now, as for catching up the item level of your older conduits, this is my personal uh, thing that I have to deal with. Like with everything else, Corthia is the thing. Because as you are farming those rares, treasures, uh, and events for your gear and your research, you'll also be getting random upgrade items for conduits. These are items that will pick your lowest level conduits and upgrade them in stages of 13 all the way up to item level 226. So farm Corthia. That's uh, not very satisfying, so at least we're going to leave you with, uh, with some tips here to help you combat the slot machine upgrade system that Blizzard have made for us. Before actually using the upgrade items, clear all of the content that rewards conduits. So that means dungeons, raids, Corthia weekly stuff, callings, etc. The longer that you can hold out until your stuff is eye level 200 or above, the better because there's nothing worse than a rare upgrade item being used to upgrade a bad conduit, or upgrade one that you could have just went and upgraded yourself. That's basically it. Just do Corthia, five head. That's our final section of the video. Yeah, that's, that's it. Just do Corthia. That's basically all the catch up this season. Renown, gear, legendaries, and conduits, those are the other things. Um, and really the answer to almost all of those problems is, is just to spend as much time in Corthia as you can, because uh, that is the way to, you know, get your conduits. It's the way to get the new upgradable gear that is also the catch-up gear. It's how you basically will be prepping for endgame anyway, with, you know, research turning into the conduit upgrades, and the research also turning into socket items eventually. That's the end of our catch-up guide. I kind of wish I could have given you some gigabrain tips and tricks, um, but look, so outside of some significant complexities in the conduit system and some oddities with Renown, it is a surprisingly streamlined experience. Just do all your weekly and daily content for, you know, Covenants uh, and in Corthia, and you will end up being most of the way there. So there you go. We hope this has been helpful to you for your alts or catching up mains. I mean, certainly I'll be uh, catching up my main and rolling an alt. So yeah, it'll be useful to me. And I guess thanks to the time gaining a renown, at least you're, well, you've got one week to go hard to try to catch up from when 9.1 launches to season two begins. So I guess make use of it. All right, that's it for me. I hope you found this useful. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time.